everyone. So this is just going to be kind of more of a, I guess, casual video, kind of like just my thoughts. Um, there was this lady that I used to follow on Twitter. Uh, we had been following each other for a really long time, actually. But I had not been very active on Twitter until the last, like, maybe three years. And that was when there was a lot of political stuff going on here in the U.S., which is why I became more active on Twitter. And I saw that, you know, this lady, she's, she has Lyme disease. Uh, she lives in Arizona. Um, and I don't, I mean, I don't recall interacting with her that much, but I guess I was following her because we both had, you know, Lyme disease and we connected a little bit and then I just wasn't really active on Twitter. Um, but long story short, she passed away. And, you know, it really hit me <laughs> very, um, I still can't believe it. Like, for whatever reason, I just don't want to believe it. And I found out, I think, a couple weeks ago, as of, you know, the recording of this video. As you guys know, I've been feeling horrible since my treatment, my exosome treatment last year. And actually that was one of the things, one of the last exchanges that I had with this woman because she had done exosomes. Um, I ended up blocking her. We ended up blocking each other on Twitter because we had differences in, I guess, political views. Um, and she had started posting a lot of conspiracy theory type things, which unfortunately is very, very common in the Lyme disease community. And it became even worse during, um, during COVID. And, and I'm talking about across the political spectrum because I followed, you know, people with Lyme disease that were, you know, on the right and on the left, but they, you know, it didn't matter what their political affiliation was for whatever reason, people within the Lyme community just really really get sucked into conspiracy theories. And so I was really bothered, you know, by a lot of the, you know, anti-vax things that she was sharing and just a lot of really bizarre conspiracy theories. And as you guys know, I'm not vaccinated. You know, I'm not vaccinated, but I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I highly recommend people get their vaccines as long as they're healthy and they're well enough to do so. Um, it's not without its risks, but I've always told you guys, talk to your doctors you know, let them know where your health is at before you get the vaccine. They'll tell you, you know, whether you're a good candidate for it or not. Um, I didn't really have a ton of pressure for my doctors to get the vaccine. They did tell me that there could be consequences if I didn't get it, but they weren't pushing and pushing me to do it. Um, and so, you know, when I found out that she had passed, I did not know that she was like epileptic, that one of her symptoms were, were, were seizures. And I guess she just kept having them. They had gotten worse. And she was very active on social media. I think that's why I just never suspected it because I saw her, you know, she was always tweeting. Um, like I said, she would tweet a lot of different things, conspiracy theories, political stuff, or just whatever. She also had a blog too. So she seemed so alive to me I mean granted I you know I, I may seem the same way to you guys I may not look sick or or come across as very sick but I don't know it just it struck me I, I saw somebody else tweet that she had passed and then I from an alternate account I went and looked at her account and I saw that there were st still tweets coming out automated tweets coming out of her account and so I went back and told the girl I said the account is still active she goes yes they're, they're automated tweets that she had set up you know, I guess a while back, um, she said, but she passed. She says, I follow her on Facebook and she, um, I guess had a really bad seizure and that was it. And it just kind of, I just didn't want to believe it. I think, and I still kind of, I go back and I look at her account and I'm like, no, she's, she's still there. You know, she's still here. Um, it's just scary. It's just scary because I, you know, of course I have to make it about myself, right? You know, the things that I've been going through this past year and how bad things have gotten. And you, you know, to me, she seemed 
well enough, right? Well enough to function, well enough to use social media, well enough to, to, to function at some level. She wasn't working. Um, I think she was probably retirement age, at least in her 50s, maybe late 50s, but I think she might have been older, but I, I don't know. I, I just, I think also too, because of the way that we, you know, had this sort of falling out in a way, it felt worse. You know, one of my, my first fears was that she had gotten COVID because I did not know about the seizures or anything like that. And knowing her beliefs and knowing that she had these, you know, I mean, very deep set, you know, just anti-vax, you know, type of beliefs. And, and I just was like, I really hope that that's not what happened to her. But it, obviously that was the first thing that came to my mind because she was so entrenched in that philosophy or, or in that belief. And I mean, I wouldn't have recommended the vaccine to her either because of, you know, especially now knowing the symptoms she was having. And, you know, for those of us who are very sensitive to everything, she also had like a lot of issues similar to mine, food sensitivities. Um, she didn't look overweight. I think I saw maybe a couple pictures of her over the years. She didn't look like she was overweight. So I, I know that the, the vaccine could be a risk for her. I just, you know, I'm not going to promote and say, don't, don't go get the vaccine to other people because of my own personal situation. So, yeah, that was my first thought. I was like, you know, I really hope that this is not a COVID-related situation. Um, but, no, I was told by this this other girl. She also has Lyme disease, and she was, I guess, a mutual follower of both of us. Um, and she told me that it was from a seizure. And so that really brings my mortality and, and just all of the horrible things that you, you guys know that what has been going on this year, you know, from my exosomes, um, videos that I've made and I just think to myself like this this is terrifying this is terrifying to and I, and I made a video of another woman that passed away I think last year she was also a youtuber she had lupus you know but now you know this lady had Lyme disease you know she had the same condition you know we have the same condition we have you know a lot of the same symptoms and it's just scary it's just scary. And, and I thought to myself, like, I have to do something. I have to, like, I can't just, I know I had this, this horrible response to this treatment, but I can't not do something. I don't know what I can do, but I can't just keep going back to the same doctor who seems to have already thrown in the towel um, because things can continue to get worse. That could have been me. You know, I, I just... It was like a slap in the face, like somebody like, you know, when you're, you know, when you see in the movies, the person is like hysterical and they have to be slapped in the face to kind of come back to reality. That's what it felt like, like this whole time, this whole year, I've been hysterical or feeling overwhelmed by what happened to me and have not thought about the next steps. Like, what am I going to do? Hopefully, once this flare goes down, if it ever does go down. Even if it doesn't go down, is there anything that I can do to help it go away or, or, or to help my situation? Even if it means going to another country, um, you know, even if it means doing something experimental. You know, she had done exosomes. She had done, I think, a smaller dosage and she had actually responded well to the exosomes. That was one what we the conversation that we had, the last exchange that we had over Twitter uh, because I had read on her blog that she had tried exosomes and she said, I really liked it. I, I want to do it again, you know, but it's very expensive. And, you know, I even had thought of referring her to my doctor because my doctor had been discussing exosomes. This was before I had even done them. But I was like, you know what, I better wait. You know, I don't want to be recommending this to someone else when I don't even know how it's going to go for me. And between that time and when I did the exosomes, I stopped talking to this lady because of all of these other things. So it hit me hard. It hit me really um, by surprise. And I just, I kind of pushed it out of my mind. But when I think about it, 
you know, I, I go back to her Twitter and she hasn't tweeted anything. She hasn't, you know. So it's it's very real. It's very real and it's very scary and it's just pushing me. It's pushing me and it's telling me you need to do something. You need to do something. You can't just sit there and let this happen to you. So yeah, I just wanted to talk about it. I don't I don't know. I don't know what else to say. And I don't want to scare you guys either, but I just I haven't talked about it. I just I haven't said anything to anyone because I mean she wasn't like a close friend but I mean she was there she was there for a long time and I just I don't know but anyways thank you so much for hearing me out I really needed to get it out of my out of my mind um but it's hard it's hard to get these things um out so thank you guys and I'll see you in the next one